Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to the video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what I personally believe is the most unrealized opportunity in the entire stock market right now. This is a sector that the majority of institutions cannot yet invest in. This is a sector that's been shorted to the ground in the past six months, now making these stocks trade at very, very cheap valuations. And this is a sector with some massive upcoming catalysts behind it. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the cannabis sector, more specifically, the United States multi-state operators, also known as US MSOs. So first off, let's talk about the opportunity. So us as retail investors and retail traders, the majority of the time we take a backseat to these institutions who get first dibs on almost everything. Take IPOs and private companies, for example. Who gets first dibs on private companies? Of course, institutions and accredited investors where the big money comes from. Then when these companies do go IPO, who gets first dibs on the IPO? That is, of course, institutions. Let's say a company is IPOing for $30 per share. Institutions are buying that IPO for 30 per share the day before it IPOs. And then the next day, the majority of the time, that IPO is already up 20 to 50% as soon as it hits the public market. Therefore, retail investors and traders just have almost no chance of getting that at such a good price like those institutions were buying it at. Now for this sector, the US MSOs, the tables have turned. These stocks are trading over the counter in the OTC market right now, and the majority of institutions are not able to buy OTC stocks. There is a very, very low institutional ownership for OTC stocks, and therefore the heavy majority of this sector is owned by retail. So this is one of the very rare opportunities for a sector before it gets uplisted to the major markets. This is a very rare chance for retail investors to actually turn the tables, get in before the institutions, and then when these stocks do end up uplisting, the institutions are buying these shares from retail investors. The tables have turned. We are therefore benefiting off the big money buying in after us. So now what would it take for these stocks to get uplisted from the OTC market? Now, of course, federal legalization of medical cannabis would do the job that would almost immediately uplist these stocks. But there's also a bill called safe banking, which has been rumored and lots of speculation going on that this will get passed within the next year and would likely result in an uplisting of these US and MSO stocks. So essentially what the Safe Banking Act is, is essentially stopping the regulation and such tight restrictions of financial services and institutions from doing business with these companies that deal with cannabis. So a version of this act passed the House by a vote of 321 to 101 this past April. So what needs to happen now is this bill to pass the Senate and then being signed by the president. There's a ton of support behind this bill and is obviously much more likely in the short term than full federal legalization. So there's an article put out as well asking experts of the sector and of the market what they think would happen if the Safe Banking Act was to pass. So looking at a couple quotes from this article, this person says, it's our view and we're very active in Washington that it will be very difficult to get full legalization of cannabis this year, but we do think it may happen over the next two to three years. And certainly we'll get safe banking, which will allow hopefully US companies that are operating in US markets to list to the United States. This next one says there's a likelihood, I don't know if it's high, but I think it's a likelihood that a New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ would open up to plant touching businesses if the Safe Making Act is passed. If that happens, then obviously institutional capital will flow into the companies. The next one says current language of SAFE doesn't expressly allow uplisting and it doesn't expressly prohibit it. SAFE will trigger to be issued what exchange and regulator decisions are guided by is where the real work will be done on uplisting. The next one says if SAFE does end up including the safe harbor, then we could and very likely would see rapid uplists by MSOs, many of which are already or just about to become full-fledged SEC reporting companies with US GAAP financials, better trading accessibly and perception benefits imparted by trading on major exchanges, typically translating to higher multiples. In the last quote, we're always in discussions with Canadian exchanges. Something's gonna happen this year for US cannabis players in terms of uplisting. So taking a quick summary of all those quotes, essentially safe making would not guarantee an uplisting, but that would be the next step in the process and make it just that much more likely. And ultimately, the majority of these experts do expect the uplisting to happen. And in my opinion, this is gonna be a catalyst in a situation that is impossible to get the perfect timing on. It's very unlikely that news comes out about safe banking and you'll have plenty of time to buy because the stocks haven't taken off yet. In my opinion, this news is gonna come out at an unknown time. It could be in a month, it could be in a year, 
could be in six months. But in my opinion, once there starts to be rumors, once everybody starts to get excited about this, it's gonna be something that's impossible to time. You're gonna want to get in before this starts happening because once the Safe Banking Act does take the next step, you're gonna see rapid buying of these US MSOs. You're gonna see all these shorts that have been driving down the stock prices. You're gonna see these shorts covering, and this is all gonna happen rapidly. These stocks are gonna make some massive moves very, very quickly once this catalyst does play out, which in my opinion is a matter of when and not if. And let's just say you're gonna to wanna to be in these positions before the rumors start coming out, before the big announcement is made, and before these stocks start taking off in a big way. And I'm saying this because the cannabis sector and cannabis stocks, this is a wild group of stocks to trade to begin with. These can make some massive, massive moves. Just take a look at some historical charts of these Canadian companies. I'm using these, for example, because they are listed on the US exchanges. Tilray, for example, IPO'd around $20 per share and then went on to hit a high of 300 just a couple months later. And this historical chart makes the move that happened this year look tiny, but when you zoom in on this, take a look at this past year, the stock was at a low of $4 per share when the sector got hot, ran all the way and hitting a high of $77 per share. Absolutely insane moves are always made by the sector. You can take a look at Aurora Cannabis, ticker symbol ACB, hit a high of 150 in the past. Canopy Growth Corp, ticker symbol CGC, hit a high of almost $60 per share in the past after running up from the single digits. Kronos Group, ticker symbol CRON, another one that made a multi 100% plus move when the sector is hot. And there's a pattern with a lot of these companies as well. In the summer months, you usually see these stocks dipping. In the fall, they start to heat up and sometimes get hot towards the end of the fall, towards the start of winter. Now that doesn't always happen, but that is a pretty common pattern with the cannabis sector if you look at those historical charts. A good rule to live by is summers and these large dips. These are for accumulation times, slowly be adding, slowly be averaging in on red days. So you can be primed and in great position for when that run begins. Because let's be honest, there are too many catalysts for the sector. I think the US MSO sector has such a much larger opportunity than something like with Canadian companies. Stronger fundamentals and trade at such lower multiples with such a larger growth opportunity having being based in the US. I could make a full video comparing US MSOs compared to the Canadian cannabis companies. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but I do encourage you to go compare fundamentals of Canadian cannabis companies compared to the US MSOs companies. And let me know what you think on that. That makes these US MSO stocks seem like they should be trading five times higher if they were valued like Canadian companies. All right, so getting back and talking about institutional ownership, so institutions in general own about 60% of the broad market. ETFs make them another about 14%, while retail investors are a little over 20% of the broad market money. Now there's US MSOs, they are very, very small owned by these institutions, which we'll take a look at in just a second. But when these stocks do get uplisted, the institutional ownership is gonna shoot up. Institutions are gonna flood into these positions because it's a growing sector, first off, second off, these fundamentals are super, super cheap for these companies. And this will be the first opportunity for many of these institutions to expose themselves to the US MSO sector. So in my opinion, when these stocks do get uplisted, institutional money is gonna absolutely be flooding into these companies. And like I was saying earlier in the video, this is one opportunity for retail investors to actually get into these positions before institutions and benefit fully off institutional money coming into your positions that you're already in. So taking a look at some institutional ownership numbers from the major US multi-state operators. First off, Cureleaf, ticker symbol C-U-R-L-F, 0.87% of these shares are owned by institutions. And Cureleaf is the largest MSO as of right now. Green Thumb Industries, ticker symbol G-T-B-I-F, the second largest MSO right now, has an institutional ownership a little bit higher at 8.3%. Another one, Cresco Labs, another large MSO, just has 0.91% institutional ownership. True Leaf Cannabis, my personal favorite in this sector, has a 7.2% institutional ownership as of right now. And taking a look at one more, Air Wellness, ticker symbol A-Y-R-W-F, institutional ownership at 12.4%. A very, very conservative estimate of what institutional ownership would be is 20% institutional ownership at the least. That is about what they're holding in the Canadian cannabis companies. In my opinion, institutional ownership for US companies would end up being a lot higher because the market just says that much more growth potential and these institutions just in general mostly invest and allocate most funds to US companies. So in my opinion, it'd be closer to 35 to 40% if I was to guess. I could be totally off on that. And one idea, if you want full exposure to the sector, but you don't necessarily wanna pick stock by stock, you can invest in the MSOS ETF, which essentially tracks the sector as a whole. As of right now, it's trading for $32 per share. And a quick look at some of the largest holdings in this ETF. 
Their largest holding is Green Thumb Industries. Cureleaf is their next largest. Cresco Labs after that, and then Trueleaf. And you can read down the rest, but these are just the largest holdings. They do have exposure to some smaller MSOs as well. One thing I'm very bullish on as well is the technical setup of this MSOS ETF. And in my opinion, it's starting to look prime for a reversal and a big run for the sector as a whole. So taking a look at the technical chart of MSOS, it's finding strong support off that 32 level after being down close to 40% from highs. And if we look at the weekly candle chart, it has essentially had a triple bottom in the past three weeks and closing this past week with a hammer candle, which is a very strong indication of a reversal. So what am I personally doing with this sector right now? I've been averaging into the plays where I have the highest conviction, which I've said is TCNNF slash HRBSF, the two companies merging together. I've said that's my highest conviction play in the sector. So I've been averaging into that. And also in this past week, I added a starter position in the MSOS ETF and also added a starter and longer term calls on that ETF for more exposure to the sector. And I'll be looking to average in and add more to that position. And also a couple other plays that I have conviction in which I'll be going through in a future video, which I wanna make a portfolio like I did with the Chinese stock portfolio a couple of videos ago, which that portfolio is actually doing pretty well. I wanna make one of those and have a series on the MSO portfolio, which I'll have a series of building out this MSO portfolio and keep track of that with update videos and everything like that. So I'll be working on that and have that out soon. If you are interested in joining the private Discord chat, the link is down below. You'll get updates every time I buy and sell any stocks. Also live updates of me building out that MSO portfolio every time I buy and sell anything, of course. And also I'll answer any questions you have in the chat. So that's the first link down in the description if you are interested. If you guys enjoyed the video, provided some value to you, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button helps me out a ton. I hope you all enjoyed. Also, let me know your thoughts down below. If you think there's anything that I'm missing with this sector and what I said in this video, let me know that in the comments. And thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to trade smart this upcoming week. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.